Hello, my name is Nicole, and I will be going over the multimodal deep learning paper from the Stanford University and University of Michigan Computer Science Department. This paper focuses on modeling mid-level relationships. Audio and visual data have these correlations, so audiovisual speech classification was used for validation. The McGurk effect is an example of integrating audiovisual information for speech recognition. This phenomenon is explained when a visual ga with a voiced ba is perceived as da. For this experiment, the task was divided into three phases, feature learning, supervised learning, and testing. A simple linear classifier was used for supervised training and testing. There was also three learning settings used, multimodal fusion, cross-modality learning, and shared representation learning. The multimodal fusion setting is where audio and visual data is available at all phases. In cross-modality learning, all data is only available during feature learning, and only a single modality is available during supervised learning and testing. And the Shared representation setting uses different modalities to capture whether correlations exist across them. Recent research examined how deep learning is used to produce representations for handwritten digits and text using greedy layer-wise training with restricted bolts machines and some fine tuning. RBMs are undirected graphical models with hidden variables and visible variables. There are connections between these hidden and visible variables, but not within each group. The first equation represents the probability distribution. The second equation represents the conditional probability distributions when the visible or hidden variable is fixed. These are the RBM pre-training models discussed in the study. Figures A and B are the most straightforward approach where audio and visual are trained separately. This method was also used as a baseline to compare the results. Figure C is the shallow model where an RBM is trained over integrated data, both audio and visual. This model is not good for learning correlations across modalities. This is fixed in figure D. The bimodal deep belief network model from figure D trains the models using a greedy method. It uses the pre-trained data from figures A and B and stores them in a hidden layer. This allows the model to correlate across modalities represented by the second layer. Even with greedily training an RBM, there are still a couple issues. There is no objective to find correlations, meaning representations can be only for audio or only for video. Also, only one modality can be present during supervised training and testing. The solution to these issues is a deep autoencoder. To combat the single modality issue, the deep autoencoder is trained to reconstruct both modalities when only a single modality is present to find correlations. But the bimodal deep encoder is able to juggle multiple modalities. This encoder uses noisy data that contains zero values for one of the input modalities and regular values for the other. Regardless of the values, both modalities are reconstructed. For this experiment, the methods were evaluated using audiovisual speech of letters and digits. The sparseness parameter was chosen using cross validation, and all other parameters were fixed. 10 contiguous audio frames and 4 video frames were used as the input. The audio frames are 100 dimensions with PCA whitening. The videos were processed to extract the mouth as the region of interest. Each region of interest is 32 dimensions with PCA whitening also. Temporal derivatives were also used to model dynamic speech information. A diverse set of data was used to learn features. 
AV letters and QAV were used for both supervised learning and unsupervised learning, while the rest were used for unsupervised learning only. QAV consisted of 36 frontal facing speakers, counting from 0 to 9 and saying each digit five times. The AV letters data set contained 10 speakers saying the letters from A to Z three times. The raw audio was used for evaluation on a visual only lip reading task. For AV letters two, there was five, five speakers saying the letters seven times. The Stanford data set consisted of 23 volunteers counting from zero to nine saying the alphabet and select sentences from the Timit data set. The cross-modality learning experiments were used to see if learning is better for one modality when both modalities are present during learning. In both the AV letters and QAV data sets, the video-only deep encoder performed the best with a classification accuracy of 64% in AV letters and 69% in QAV. This proves effective because the autoencoders are able to find video presentations when given additional audio data. Although audio performance for speech recognition is good, both modalities were fused together to improve the performance. The models were evaluated in both clean and noisy audio settings. It was found that when audio and visual features are linked together in a chain, like an example E from the first table, the performance is worse when compared to using audio only. Example D represents the combination of the audio features with the linked multimodal features, which outperform the other feature combinations. This means that the multimodal features and audio features are better able to complement each other. As mentioned before, the McGurk effect is the phenomenon where visual G with audio B is perceived as D. The 23 volunteers from the Stanford dataset spoke five repetitions of G, B, and D. A linear SVM was trained on these three way classification. The model successfully predicted the correct class B with 82.6% accuracy and GA with 89.1% accuracy. The models were able to behave consistent with the McGurk effect. The experiment also tested whether a shared representation can be learned over audio and speech data. The figure on the right shows how the algorithm is given data from audio then tested on video. The canonical correlation analysis was used to form a shared representation. The best results were on raw data as seen on the table, specifically learning the CCA representation on audio, RBM, and video RBM first. This res these results were surprising because testing on audio performed better than testing on video. The results also showed that learn representations are partially invariant to input modality. Previous work on audiovisual speech recognition includes Juhes et al., Duchnowski et al., and Mayer et al. Juhes et al. showed that performance is better when the predicted auditory signal is combined with a noisy auditory signal in a noisy setting. They found this by training a neural network to predict the auditory signal given a visual input. Dushnowski et al. and Mayer et al. combined the predictions at a phonetic layer to predict the spoken phoneme. Overall, this paper proves that deep learning can be applied to the challenging task of finding the appropriate features to study lip reading for discovering multimodal features. That concludes my presentation. Uh, are there any questions?